you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the uh, Attorney Play and Zoning Board meeting. I'd ask you to please all rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please remain standing for one moment um, in observance of tomorrow's 9-11 uh, anniversary, please. Thank you very much. Okay, Julia, roll call, please. Cleanhammer? Yes. Dickinson? Here. Lucian? Yes. Pachowski? Here. Fullerton? Here. Offerling? Here. Gunn? Mayor Calvados? Here. Councilmember Lynn Calcatas? Here. Beatrice? Here. Obert? Dave Rowan? Here. And Brian Hall? Here. Thank you. Public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act has been given by the clerk in the following manner posted on the bulletin board in the borough clerk's office, emailed to the retrospect and the courier post. Uh, the first matter of business is approval of the minutes from the August 13th meeting. Do have a motion? Second. Motion by Mr. Dickinson, second by Ms. Christian. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion is approved. Minutes are approved. Uh, we have a, uh, before we get into the discussion of home, home business, I think will probably want us a little bit of time. Is, sir, what are you here for this evening? I'd like to address Mayor and Council with the problem I had at 108 Schubert Avenue in London. I right. said Mayor and Council. Mayor and Council isn't here. This is a planning board meeting. So, what is okay, it? Uh, come forward, please. Let me, let me just let's hear what you have to say. I don't want to accept through the whole dissertation about the home business. Your, your okay. name and address, please. Uh, 100 Schubert Avenue, Romney, New Jersey. My name is Eugene Slowinski. Uh, the only people I recognize are Mr. Beatrice and Jim, and very few. But back uh, too many decades ago, there was a uh, retaining wall built between myself and my neighbor. It was supposed to be landscaped and aesthetically beautiful. It didn't turn out that way. And now I'm having problems with undergrowth and ivy and trees that are covered with ivy that have fallen onto my property from his. Uh, I'm addressing it because it, there's never been a cleanup between the properties since that wall went up and it is rotting out and the dirt is starting to come over. He's got trees of his, on his own property that have fallen and haven't been taken care of. Okay. Okay, I, I'd like somebody to, I know that there's a maintenance for a person's house okay. and property. Yes. And, and I'd like that book back. Mr. Mike, could you approach please? Sure. Thank you. Uh, these are two private private properties. That we're talking about. Two, two <laughs> private properties. I, I have pictures. And this this is uh, Keith Knight. He is our code enforcement official in town. Uh, I would I would like to defer to Mr. Knight. What have you visited the property, Mr. Knight? Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, the fallen trees that was originally his complaint. I was out there to the property. The property owner was issued a notice of violation for the trees. Uh, has not complied, and I will be issuing municipal uh, someone's court for those uh, non compliance items. Okay. Uh, Mr. Solinsky came into the uh, office the other day with some letters, and I believe they were from 1984 from the DEP. Okay. And also a letter from the then planning board from 1985 indicating that there were some site improvements that were to be made to the property. Uh, his contention were that they were never completed correct from from 1984 1985 if i recall the state <coughs> referred uh, the violation to the local board okay uh, his contention is that it was referred to the local board at that time back in 1985 if i recall the letter that i read and that it's not been followed through the gentleman that owns 108 is not coming into compliance with the uh, <coughs> requirements of the time from 1984. Has it been the same owner, sir, since yes. 1985? Okay. The, the, 
if, if I may take a minute, the sure. wall is supposed to be constructed out of six by sixes and turned out and tied backs and all that. Well, Mr. Beatrice was kind enough to send me that print, which I, I still have at home. Okay. The wall was never constructed out of six by sixes. It was three and a half by three or something. Now they're rotted out, the ivy is taken over, and there was never any nice planning put in there like it was supposed to be to make it look decent between our properties. I had been putting up vinyl through the fence to try and keep the weeds and grass from coming over to my side, and, and I'm sure you can see in the pictures, I have some, and so it's just like, it shows, it, it just, it's a, an ongoing battle. Okay. And Mr. Masiati doesn't do anything. The only, the front that you can see is what he takes care of prior to him hiring a contractor to do his grass and stuff like that. They used to dump all the grass, all the leaves, all the rubbish, no trash, no edible stuff. Yes. Down the hill between our properties because he couldn't see it. Okay. And, and that's the conditions today. He's got trees down on his side and on my side. Okay. So it's your contention that we, that we still have some issues from the 1980s that have not been resolved to your satisfaction? We, we don't have to go back to the 80s. If somebody goes out and looks now, okay. and Mr. Knight, that you'll see that it's, it's a mess and nothing's <coughs> Mr. Knight, do you believe it's a, a code enforcement violation? Well, in violation? The, the trees, as he's indicated, uh, again, with the original complaint, you know, that's what he was cited for. And any property maintenance issues I will handle. Okay. But his contention regarding the 1984 complaint, uh, and I believe it was the, the fact that it indicated in the letter there was an elevation of the real property that was unpermitted and retainable. That's really beyond the scope of the property maintenance. Uh, anything that has to be resolved from that, if it uh, required at the time, that's why I refer to the year, because it was referred to the planning board at the time. So what your, what, what your contention is now is that we have a, um, you're basically having some water going onto your property because of the lack of the I, I, I actually have in some places dirt coming down Okay, I understand. Okay. I understand. And I have trees that are 60 feet high, 20 feet hanging over my driveway. Okay? And I already have two or three of these trees laying on my backyard. Oh, my goodness. Okay? And there's dead trees, uh, I should have just night, okay. that another tree, a branch came down and stuck straight in the ground. And every year, I'm picking up branches and different. I, I burn wood and I have no problems. <laughs> the problem I'm having is, Clean up the mess, and then I can deal with mine. And just for my edification purposes, um, initially, <coughs> initially, where did where did this uh, communication originate? You said it was the DEP did the inspection. Is that correct? It, it started started here. Okay. With a Mr. Contreras. Okay. And I got nowhere with him. Okay. And therefore, I went to Mr. Florio. Okay. And Mr. Florio. And then we had problems with the neighbors behind. Tony also complained that water was running off and, okay. and there was all kinds of problems, okay? The, the water problem was more or less taken care of because something was done there. But now it's been so long that the retaining wall is it's rotting in, it's covered over with ivy and, and it's just a mess. Okay, is it the topography of the property that's causing this or what is it? It, it, somebody like this was is natural deterioration. Okay. Like, you don't have trees fall. Right. Age. Okay. So yeah. covered in ivy is what's killing them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the question I, I would like to ask is obviously to the engineer, to the you know, our solicitors. Obviously, this uh, a variance was granted to put this retaining wall back up in the 80s. But what kind of obligation does that uh, property owner have to maintain this thing over the past uh, 30 years? Do we have the right to go out there and re inspect it and say that? It was it done properly or that it has deteriorated to such a point where to meet the obligation that that board back in 85 that bound them to that they respond the deterioration nick is now affecting adjacent property owners yeah we can we can say so okay so meeting these so it's not a property meeting yes section of the ordinance and that was all under that but i mean i hate to bring up other planning boards but uh other you know i've seen other planning boards where someone was required to do something and years went by 
they removed whatever they were supposed to do, someone from the planning board noticed that something was supposed to be done, they go out and say, hey, you, was, you had a fence originally approved, you've now taken the fence down, you need to put that fence back up. Nick, I'm not familiar with any statute of limitations. On well, that's what I'm getting at. Is there yeah, no statute of limitations that this retaining wall has to be maintained? I think maintained. there is. I think if that was the approval and you didn't do it, when it's discovered that you didn't do it, yeah, this is very true. The fifth we show this property, yeah, we need to act. But what I would do is, if Keith files a charge against the adjacent neighbor, make sure you have the original resolute or approval with what he was required to do. Okay. In detail. Yeah. Yeah. Again, the the property maintenance issues, and again, we're going to write court summons for that. that that's clear. Right? Whether there was any kind of prior approval or not, you have to maintain the property. Question as Mr. Potts indicated, if there were prior approvals, either one they were not met yeah. or two they were not maintained, the question is whose enforcement? Uh, I, I are we able to compel them to to fix this wall? I, I, I think the standards that, of 19. That probably would be a letter from Len Wood, okay? Because we don't have enforcement power, the zoning board, but the uh, the borough does. But I think we would first have to find out what was approved and what was required. And if that was not complied with, I would give them the courtesy of giving them an initial letter. And if they don't comply with what they were supposed to do, we we'll would refer it to the borough. And then the, you know, Len Wood would. Len Wood is the attorney for the council. council. Okay, the, the only other thing is that, and, and I understand it's a long time ago, there was supposed to be some way for my neighbor to get in to clean between the properties. I mean, you just can't put up a wall and not take care of the other foot and half down below that's next to me. Yeah, you know, I don't know if it was an easement or the whole most of, most of this thing was pulled because of difference in elevation to your property. Right? He raised it. Remember, I, I'm you know, as I'm sitting here, I'm beginning to see Mr. Masvidal. I have no reasonable to you. I've slept in. I have mean, since 1985, I have a lot of naps, and I don't Yes, know. He, had, he had a hole six feet below my property that he filled the all the way up. That's approximately, I'd say, eight feet above my property now, and above the neighbors. He filled the Magiac Mountain, and he, he doesn't take I'm care of the back. Yeah, yeah. I just I just started to recall the all the testimony that we took from Mr. Well, it's, it's still like that, and, and things just aren't, aren't going the right way. I would appreciate anything that you can do. Do you have a copy of that original approval or resolution? Do you know? I mean, our records are. I, I understand that. I, I have the drawing that Mr. Dietrich gave me, which is Mr. Dickinson or Mr. Dietrich? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I don't want to smile. I don't know why I'm smiling. He's just looking at the street. But yes, I still have the, the copy of the drawing. Okay? Okay, I will gladly bring it to the drawing. Is there any verbiage with the drawing that says it must be done? I wonder what I wrote on it. <laughs> well, do our records go back? It looks like this is a two headed yeah, head. Out here too. I'm, I'm sure it is. I mean, I'm not asking you to go in there and, and blow the property back up where it used to be. I'm just asking for something to be done so that it looks reasonable. Well, it's, it's obviously the mission lights on top of it. He's going to say oh, he, he has definitely done for, it for the trees. I'm here because I requested that, like, the trees overhanging all over the place. Okay. He has to address because that's not what he was there for. He was for the ones that were already down. Sure. And I'm not sure the rest of them doing it, it's just I don't know when. Are the trees Mr. Willian, do you think uh, a letter from uh, Len Wood's office is in order? The current I, letter? I, I, I would, I mean, you could do that, but I would say to them, Keith said he's getting ready to say it, correct? For the <coughs> maintenance issues. So the maintenance would be any overhanging trees or well, any trees? The overhanging trees and form. Trees, anything that's a maintenance issue. Well, well, why don't we, why don't we start with that first, okay. and then you know? And we'll try to work on the topography of the properties. And, and unfortunately, it sounds like we don't have. Well, let's see if we can find a resolution. We'll see if we can find it. Yeah. Jane's looking to go upstairs. I mean, it, it's possible that maybe if you talk to the gentleman, I, I don't know the man. 
But if, he, if Walton understands that we are at this point, it's a maintenance issue that you just want his trees off of your property and, 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 and is, cleaned is up. overhang. And then I have to coming down in one yeah, area. He, he needs to assure that up there. Yeah. He has to, there, there's a theory of law called adjacent lateral support. And a landowner, an adjacent landowner, cannot do something that causes his property or road onto yours or yours to a road onto his. So if there is something there that that would have okay. to be any, any help you can give me would be great. Mr. Wright will be as aggressive as you possibly can with his with his And I guess Mr. Wright, try to encompass as much as you can. Well, again, and I'll be issuing court summons to Mr. Manziotti. Okay. And I will also be asking Mr. Solinsky for the trial. That's fine, yes. So you can add any additional information. Hopefully you can resolve any maintenance issues there. Again, I guess his purpose here is I suggest that you come here. Sure. What do you only the, uh, I guess, site approvals uh, in 1984. Right. So that's something that's... I, I'm a big advocate. Yeah, if, you, if you can find the drawings of the improvements that will be required, that will be phenomenal. Uh, it wasn't approved by the board. The, the board approved it. And then it's up to council and the township engineer to make sure that was properly installed, constructed. So if it's a, a lack of uh, uh, abiding by the the approval, then it's going to be on council to do the next step. Uh, the planning board and zoning board really can't do much right now. That's not the purview of the enforcement. Right. It's, it, it really is an enforcement issue. Uh, Mr. Knight would take care of the property maintenance issue, but then if there's a, an enforcement issue of the approval, that would be town council. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. Okay, Mr. Slinsky. I thank you very much. You're most welcome, sir. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's your property that you're having. It's always that property. Yeah, because I got to clean it up. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Well, the next order of business is the discussion of no business. Uh, we, uh, this has probably been, I want to say, it was June that we first started uh, discussing this. And uh, Mr. Rowley has sent. I'm sorry. <laughs> for, for, okay. Yeah. What, what can we do for you, Dan? Um, yeah, thank you. Barbara, 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 Barbara Reed, uh, See you, buddy. Uh, Hi. How are you, sir? Good. Um, we have a fairly good size. Can you hear Dan? Just for the record, would you please state your name and address? Yes. Uh, Dan. Daniel Flory, F L U R Y, 900 East Clemens Bridge Road, and running. Of course. So, uh, Mr. Flory, I was talking to Dean Kukulis, who yes. owns the vault restaurant. I don't know if you've talked to you. So. I did. Um, yeah. uh, it's either he would like to buy the vault restaurant, or it's going to be sold. Um, it's going to be sold. 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 It's uh, two separate living spaces, like an apartment on the top floor. <coughs> or if that doesn't work out, we would like to um, convert our top floor to a separate living space. It has a own entrance, there's a step to go right up to the top. There's a, uh, one bedroom can be easily converted into a kitchenette, and um, it's got a full bath, and uh, another large bedroom in the back. So uh, I'm exploring the possibility of doing that. Well, Dean called me today, and I uh, referred him to Mr. Knight to give Mr. Knight a call to make an appointment to have Mr. Knight uh, visit the property with him, um, because Mr. Knight would be able to provide him with uh, all the information as far as what it is zoned for already, but what is permissible there without changing anything, without asking for any variances, what's not permissible. So Dean called me. I think it was probably. A, lunchtime or so. I don't know that Dean had the opportunity to reach out to Mr. Knight, but that was my first course of action was because it is obviously going to be a change of use for what it is right now. You might be required to have a use variance, in which case, you know, there's a lot of things involved that you need to prove, hardships and things of that nature. So um, I, I think there probably needs to be a discussion before you really go any further with maybe you and Dean and Mr. Knight as to, to the effect of 
you know, here's what is allowable in this zone, here's what's not allowable, here's if you need to use variance, if you don't need to use variance, and then um, and then go from there and, and figure out what you need to do. So just to sort of point Yeah, I was sort point with Mr. Mike, and um, that's, no, no, you no, 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 went back to the property with Mr. Mike, yeah. will come back to the property, and he'll explain to you what, what your property is zoned, okay, what's permissible there, and what's not, and then, and then you guys will have a conversation, and at that point, Mr. Knight deems it necessary, he will apply for a use variance, he will, then, he will refer you to, you know, um, for a wall, to go as necessary, and work together to apply for use variance. So, I think you should, I, I didn't need to do a comment tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm right. talking to you informally, but there's, a, there's kind of like a pecking order, and Mr. Knight is, is the first um, person you want to speak to? I, I'm being aware of it. It's one county approved. Yeah. County approval also. Oh, really? Okay, thanks. I did have an opportunity. Dean did come in this afternoon to speak to me about this is the property that currently has the barber shop yes. and a residence above it. Okay. What I indicated to him it was a commercial zone, and what it, it presently is, it's existing non conforming. Okay. Because it has a residential use above it. What we're going to do is modify the non-conforming use from a single family to uh, two families, two plus, right. which I indicated would require a use variance. Okay. Eliminating the barber shop? No, no. they would maintain the barber shop, and he wanted to take the existing apartment area and divide, uh, and divide it into two, which again, it's an existing non-conforming, which is not permitted, you're not permitted to alter it unless you're Reducing the degree of non-compliance, right? In, in actuality, he's they're, increasing, they're increasing the yeah. degree of non-compliance by putting in two units. Uh, one of the things that the board has to consider, sir, is, and you have to show to get around the second phase before you come up, is that there's a hardship. If there's no hardship. <laughs> well, unfortunately, economics yeah. isn't a hardship. <laughs> no, it's not a hardship. What would the hardship be? Well, if the, 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 it's the narrowness of a lot, or the the, the, the building was was built years ago in a particular fashion, that that's what it should have, that's what it was then, and maybe it's what it should be now. But the hardship is very, very hard to prove in the use of it. It can't be self-created. And it can't, it can't be an economic hardship. In other words, well, geez, I can make more money rents if I convert. And they, they can't, that, that doesn't pass, it's not going to pass their test. It's not that they won't hear every application that comes before the board, but that's one of the big hurdles that you have to get over. Is that occupied now? Yeah. Upstairs. So what we would do is just, if we do it ourselves, we will just move down to our, you know, we have a fairly large middle floor. And uh, then build a wall going up to the steps that go up to this. It has its own separate entrance. It's really going to be a fairly simple thing. But, but, but we're all going to have an yeah. expansion of a yeah. nice number of years. Yeah. Yeah. And there, the statutes really look, don't look in favor of that, mm -hmm. of expansions. In fact, they usually, the case law usually tells a board, hey, board, unless it's a real extreme circumstances, you're, you're not supposed we to. really can't. They can't. Well, if Dean plans, you know, if it works out that he, so he won't be able to do it either. The only thing Dean could do would be to buy it and knock it down and put, no, I'm good, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if the only thing Dean could do would be to knock it down and put something else there for commercial use because it's already zoned commercial. If he wanted to somehow, I don't know how your lots connect. I, I don't know how they connect. There's a street. You know, but if he, but if he wanted to make that a commercial parking lot for his for his vault, yeah. and then perhaps do something with his vault property, so that the parking is no longer on the vault lot, and all this parking is on your lot. I mean, that's commercial, but there's no way that I mean, I'm not saying there's no way. I'm speaking for myself, but you're like like Mr. Rowan stated. You're asking to um, create more of a non-conforming use, and the law doesn't allow us to really do that. What, what determines conforming? Like, because it's what's 
is what's yes. permitted in a, in a commercial zone. Yeah. See, residential isn't permitted in a commercial zone. If you look at the ordinance. Yeah. Uh, that close? Right now we're zoning. Oh, well, we're in a commercial zone. Well, you're in a Our commercial position. zone. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're non-conform. You just yeah. you you were probably allowed to do that years ago, or somebody got a use variance years ago to do it. So it's what now that they when they redo their master plan and their zoning ordinance. Now they've done that, that that area is commercial. Anything that was existing before that that wasn't commercial is a non-conforming use. And the statute said you can't, or case law says you really can't expand that. And that's, unless there's an extreme hardship. You couldn't create or build a new structure similar to yours today. Yeah, they you can do that. Yeah. Only because it's existing. You can keep what you have. They, they can. can. Yeah, absolutely. They can. They can. Okay. All right, then. Thank you all. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Take good care. Okay, now we will move on to the home businesses. Uh, everybody got a copy of this, I hope? Okay. Um, do we have any additional copies? Chairman Brian also gave me, uh, and he may have some good copies of the uh, of the ordinance that Del Rand has report, which is somewhat of the one that Foster and Sherry Hill are up here. I wasn't here. Stacked up 
probably in front of everybody else's houses while they're, they're going in and, you know, putting orders in or, or having their taxes done and things. Um, we, want, we wanted to not infringe upon the neighbors. So if someone wants to have their taxes done, it's going to be incumbent on the business owner to schedule accordingly. So there's no more than two people uh, on the premise at one time uh, getting the service of that business done. There should be no display of products visible from the street, nor shall any article be sold or offered for sale on or from the premise. Okay, it's not going to be a, a warehousing type of thing. Um, they're not going to be advertising. It's, it's a home business. The residential character of that lot and business shall not be changed or altered. No sign identifying or advertising the home occupation shall be permitted. No more than one non-residential full-time or part-time employee shall be permitted, okay? So we're going to have, if somebody needs to have a secretary there or someone to answer the phones or someone to dispatch the trucks, that's fine. Uh, they're going to be allowed to have one person that they hire to come in that is not part of that household. No sounds of coming from the home. Occupation shall be audible outside the residence. Again, we're trying to protect the other residents in the area, all right? No equipment shall be used which will cause interference with radio and television reception neighboring dwellings or create other nuisances by its operation. Delivery shall be limited to package services such as United Parcel Service, FedEx, or other recognized delivery services. We often have traffic trailers coming in to residential areas of uh, delivering goods of, of any type. Okay, if they want to use FedEx, or UPS, that's fine, we all use that. Uh, nothing in the tractor trailer type of um, use. No additional off-street parking to accommodate the home occupation shall be allowed. Any existing off-street parking may be utilized for home occupation purposes at the discretion of the homeowner. No business shall be conducted at the site before 8 a.m. or later than 9 p.m. Only one business vehicle combined with a trailer, if any, uh, exceeding 8,000 pounds registered weight shall be permitted to park at the residential property. We, cut, we have the landscape, you know, people that are into landscaping in mind with that. Um, you know, we know that they're going to maybe have a trailer with the lawnmowers and, and things of that nature involved. And this is, this is where we had discussed that certain business owners may need to come in front of the board and ask for some discretion because we all know that uh, some people may have more than one business vehicle at their location and if their location is properly suited for that, they can certainly come in and ask us for relief and they can say, okay, uh, Lord, I understand that you know, there's only one vehicle permitted. I happen to have an acre and a half of property where I'm at and I have, um, you know, four landscaping trucks and trailers, but it's not infringing upon anyone else. And if they prove to us that, that in fact, they're not going to be infringing upon anyone else by having their four landscape trailers on their acre and a half, then it will be to our discretion to grant them relief on that, okay? What it does is it gives us more control of saying, we're not going to have somebody park in front of park their vehicles and their trailers in front of other people's homes when they don't have the capacity to handle it on their own property. Okay? There's been a number of complaints over the years where people you know, had different types of you know, tree, tree cutting trucks and all different kinds of tow trucks and things, and all of a sudden they all come back to the, to the hub, which is somebody's house, and all of a sudden that person next door can't park in front of their own house because there's a tow truck parked across the front of their house. You know, that, that's where the business owner decides they're going to keep it. Well, that's not fair for the resident living there. And that's what we're trying to control. Um, we're not trying to tell people that they have enough property and enough space um, that they can't house their vehicles there. You know, um, if they have the space, we're going to listen. And we're going to, we're going to try to give relief where we can. We're not trying to hurt any home business, we're not trying to discourage home business, but we do have to take the residents' uh, inconvenience into, into account and have some type of control.
controls in place to act upon this because right now we have no controls in place to act upon this. They can park wherever they want, do whatever they want, and there's nothing we can do about it. We can't ticket them, we can't do anything. Uh, B, section B, is prohibited home occupations. The following uses are specifically prohibited as home occupations. Auto repair, refurbishing, or servicing, retail sales, restaurant or other food distribution or sales. Section C, home occupations shall be permitted upon application and grant of a zoning permit certifying compliance, which permit shall be issued by the zoning officer. Okay, we had talked about fee. We're not really, I'm personally not looking for a fee per se. I mean, it's not about money. It's, it's about having control of trying to protect the other residents in town. That's just my opinion. I open up for discussion. Madam Chair, I have yes, one thing I'd like to bring to your attention. Yes, sir. In the municipal land use law, the definition of conditional use clearly puts the onus on the planning board. If we're going to change who is going to direct or inspect, we have to make sure that that gets removed from, if you'd like to read that, that that's my interpretation. Maybe we should ask for oh, Yeah, I would ask, I would ask Mr. Rowan. Um, we don't have to say this is a conditional use. We can just well, say this. Yeah. yeah, that's what I, I, I agree with Mr. Rowan. So it's a permitted use? It's a permitted use okay. with these, uh, <coughs> I think my conditional use, a permitted use with. Uh, the conditional use, uh, and this is what we, we, you know, we have to, when we make our, our recommendation to borrow. Do we want somebody that's going to put a home business in here? Regardless of what it is to come before us and get it no, approved. No, oh, no. Okay, all right. Because that, that way you do have then that would be the conditional we don't want. Okay, okay. so you don't want that. You want it set down as a that their home business is as a permitted use. Yeah. Okay. Come right. on. Is that how everybody feels? I mean I don't mean to jump in. I I well, Mr. Dickens. Mr. Mr. Rowley wrote it up as conditional use when when he wrote this I crossed that. a couple yeah. months ago. <laughs> No, it's fine. I mean, no, we don't well, I'm trying to say, I was trying to say, you know, because of neighbor, you, the board might want to see what's coming in, a, a neighbor. Right. Okay, because a, a lot of times what happens, or could happen, and of course this is a new, we never had any, we didn't no. this in, in our, in our, for our ordinance. Somebody, somebody's going to be sitting there, uh, whether it's June or Keith, and yet we comply and he signs off the permit, and all of a sudden it's not what they were told. So, but I mean, that's fine. We can make it a permitted use. If we do, we may want to, the first three things that I said were specifically prohibited, we might want to expand that a little more. And okay. Yeah, I really have a little more detail. Can we do that? Can we have to put it in the uh, master plan, in the uh, housing element of the master plan? Well, no, this, this would just be part, in, in addition to our existing zoning ordinance. This would just be a, an, an addition, just like the, the, the one, the, uh, the most recent one that they, uh, uh, the new ordinance amending and supplementing the zoning ordinance regarding outside dining for district, yeah. uh, for commercial C zone. Yeah. We just inserted that. Yeah, in yeah you know, insert it. Yeah, you, you would insert This would just be a new chapter. Yeah, a, a, home with business residential place. one, residential two, and also permitted. Yeah. This would be a home business yeah. in all three residential sites. Right. I, I do like, uh, I don't know if never get a chance, I know it was quick to read this. Yeah. There's some actually some good points on this one that I think should be blended with what Mr. Rose yeah. 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 But if yeah. you saw this, I mean, it, it's something that, that I think is very important, which uh, is, the, is the part about uh, business trash. And obviously, <coughs> that if someone's in a residential neighborhood, <coughs> they can't exceed what we currently allow for a uh, home right. pickup. I mean, we have contracts with our uh, to pick up trash. So I like that this really uh, reiterates. Oh, on the back, uh, number the back. 17. Yeah. Uh, I think that's very good. Obviously, number 16 for the uh, for process that it would be the clerk. I think we should allow the clerk's office to regulate this. I don't really think this is something that needs to go to the construction department. I think this can be regulated in the clerk. Sure. And, and, uh, and I think 17 is very important because I think that matches, I think we need to make sure that matches one of these current uh, trash orders. I think we allow for 10 receptacles. Everybody, I just have one question as far as the parking concerns. Let's say I have a business, 
have a two-car garage or a three-car garage that fits all my property. Okay, but I have maybe three or four employees, and it's my they park their vehicles and pick them up from there. Yeah. I think we're being too Where do they leave the item? Yeah. Where do they leave the car? And because we're letting them do that, then we're letting them keep the two or three vehicles that normally would be off the street yeah. and in their driveway. I think Andy, what you're saying was, uh, you're right, we don't want them to pull cars on the street, but right. Mr. Dickinson, Mr. Beatrice, so I've got to be saying this. <laughs> Mr. Beatrice is saying uh, if they have parking, we allow them yeah. to park yeah. off street, mm -hmm. right. which we don't need to regulate. If they do have a long driveway or a large piece of property. Maybe can we say things as, as vague as, as long as they oh, have no, no, just. I didn't mean to put I'm just saying it's something we should think about yeah. because there is an attack, I don't know, of a family with a business that doesn't have at least two vehicles. Yeah. So at least if they're parked off the street and, and we say and they're on the street now. We want them off. On the woods. Yeah. I'm just saying these are these have to exist. Some houses have very very limited space. If you're taking space away. Is that what going to boil? The minimum required to build a house? Well, I think if someone wants to have a home business in their, in their, on their property and they want to have some employees come to park, I think they should have a, a driveway to park. Right. I think we should look, we should. No, we should have the, the and function. actually regulate to keep them off the street. That's, I think that's what we do want. How oh, about the square area that you have to have, a, a movie space that you have to have in the house when you build it? Is it required for R1, R2, R3, or R2? Oh, I see you're saying if we allow 15% to be office, it, it decreases the living space. Is that your, your concern? Yeah. It decreases. It decreases. He couldn't build it. You hear what Mr. Nicholson's point? That's actually interesting. Well, if, if, if you take up too much of your house as a business, then it's no longer a house. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it's your home. Yeah. That's a That's a... The decision that you make as a business owner. Well, and again, again, again they're going to come in if they need relief. They're just going to come in and, and present their case. And are we causing a, a violation of the, of the land use ordinance? We say you can take 250 square feet, turn it into an office. You can have decreased your living space, which now is below what we're saying is your middle. Is that what you're saying? Makes sense to me. I think we're getting a little bit of a confused, but it's interesting to look at that. You're right. Well, I brought the question up for to think about it because a lot of towns, a lot of streets in town, you know, we're parking on both sides, you can't go. Well, that was the one thing I'd like to change in this, and I see, you know, I, 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 I agree with you, all the vehicles have to go off the street. I agree with that statement. Somehow we got to get any vehicle that is associated with the business off the street. And I don't know if we necessarily want to limit it. If someone does have a three-car garage, why could well, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. There. Why limit it to one vehicle if they have three spots? Well, that was my discussion that if they have the room, they have, you know, six landscaping trucks, they have an acre. <coughs> They're not going to care. Yeah, that's right. But, but the, uh, the fact of the matter is, is I think we want to we want to make them come in and tell us here's what we have. And then we'll give them that approval. Well, if you look under number six, that uh, we also have is that no, oh, yeah, is, uh, no additional traffic or off street parking shall be generated by such occupation in excess of one automobile. I mean, that, that's being vague enough that saying, that, well, if you park your, because maybe we should cross off the fact that maybe, on, like I said, we blend these together. We take that one, and that says, well, you can't park all your vehicles on the street except for one. But yet, if you have parking, you can park them on your property. So you want to plug that in where number 12 is? Number 12 states in ours, no additional off street parking to accommodate the home occupation shall be allowed. Yeah, maybe that's. Number six. Traffic number 12. Off street parking shall be generated by, by such. It's not, it's not worded real well either, though. That's it, saying to me, you only have one, one vehicle off street parking. Yeah, yeah. And we don't want it. Well, we want that one not off street. We want, we want to allow the off, uh, off street, but not on street. I'm sorry. That's the same yeah, thing. It's it, one car. Yeah, that's not what you need. And Chell, not in Chell, Chell's in Chell's in Florida. I think we have to say that uh, commercial vehicles must be, are allowed to be parked, you know, somehow say it's suitable to the, to the, the, the condition of the property, that you know, if they have three spots, they can park three, if they have one, they can park one. Um, we need to say something to that effect. And then also, I think, Mr. Uh, Knight, I think it's important that they're parked not on grass. I, I don't know if anybody has a problem with this. I think if you're going to 
Lapa yeah. will acquire yeah. that. But if they're parking on a, on a property, they tend to be on some type of impervious surface. You know, so it's going a trailer or a truck. I don't know, how, how do you feel about that? Am I wrong, Ron, or, or is that? In your particular game, I don't mean to bring you into it, but if someone's pulling into, if someone lives on, on Reed Avenue, and it's a tight piece of property, should they park on? on I thought we were supposed to have, if it, I mean, for me, if it's just a little house in the front, you should either have stone or it be paid. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no parking on the lawn area. No parking on the grass. That's no. Or dirt. Is that a current ordinance we have now, Mr. Knight? The current ordinance prohibits parking of motor vehicles on the front lawn. Right. Doesn't prohibit trailers or non-motor vehicles. Yeah, we had that issue actually over on New Street, right? Some of us voted for parking motor vehicles. So trailers, so only when you say Didn't that have a Davis Road? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Was it on Google I know it was on Davis Road and it was on Joe's Road. Just parking on dirt. Correct. We'll park on the front lawn and yeah, the park. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what we have to be concerned about. Well, I, I think we're allowing people to park. They've got the parking spaces. We should be allowing them to park their cars. Yeah, yeah sure. it's so all the site of the thing. Yeah, well, yeah, the park's so But here we're saying you'll have one car. All of a sudden we're going to run somebody who's on the curb with three cars. So as many cars as long as yeah, I don't know how you say that. the parking area is sufficient. paved or. But then again, we're not going to let them, we're not gonna let them pave. The whole, the whole yard, yard yeah. because then all of a sudden they're encroaching on their, on their neighbors. Yeah. And all of a sudden they have a semi, you know, parked along the fence, and this person who lives next door has this semi, you know, his tow truck parked against the fence, and they, they go out there so yeah, the back door. But anyway, Mr. Beecher's point is that if you're not going to park somebody park four, they would be better than if we say how many cars you could have off sports. Off site or two big, one big or two vehicles, and then if they want more than that, they come in. Yeah, and then we, did, we it's determine it's whether they should be fine because you can only have one extra employee, right? And two patrons, so it should be three cars, right? So you, maximum, right? you can't right. have a maximum of, or a maximum of three, but, but what we don't want Joe to be parked on the grass either. So a maximum of three, you the only one that does have a maximum lot covered. So the impervious is the impervious would be tough for the path. I mean, it's just the uh, well, it prevents, uh, permits or prohibits front yard parking. So you won't have the driveway in the front. So I guess we could say no more than three cars. I think three cars. I just heard as long as the impervious coverage was available. Or? Yeah. yeah. Three cars on impervious. And, and I think remember what we're not doing here is we're not talking about the size of the lots. We're, we're, this is generic for all the residential. Correct. So a house that has a 50 foot of frontage or a house that has 500 foot of frontage. We're treating the same. They've got six kids and they all have cars. We're talking specifically about the business. Yeah, but you don't know what you're told. Those kids can park on the street. Six kids can park on the street. We're not denying residential park. No, no, no. Business. The reason why I say this. Mr. Kay, do you think it will be a space plan? If I have a business okay, and I have a two car garage and I could fit, I'm assuming that maybe I might not be able to get the thing in the garage if I have a business. I'm only being practical on that, okay? So I could fit three cars in my driveway. Okay, but I have a car, my wife has a car, my kid has a car, and I've got three cars. Normally would be in the driveway, but they can't be in the driveway now. Street. Now I got kids out there playing basketball on the street that you just can't you just about get back and forth into because these cars are now on the street, not in the driveway. That's what, what I'm saying, that, Tony. I, mean, well, I, I don't know what you say. I'm only throwing it out. What are we talking? I'm not. Uh, we're only talking. Um, well, what we're trying to do? We're we trying to allow people to have home business or not? We're trying to accommodate their own businesses. I but think at this particular point, we're trying to work with people that have their own business. So do we go down to one again? Uh, I don't know where we're going, but you know, I'm just, I just want to put something more. Sure, no, I appreciate that, absolutely. But you're right, the cars have to be somewhere. You know, so the, the kids, it's a shame. They're playing basketball on the street. They do not want to stop you when you come down the street. If you're getting involved in your, you know, in their game, even if you beat, if you beat the, you know, whatever. No, I'm talking about reality. 
Do we well, have to reach out to the We still need to make a decision. Well, you're right. But, uh, okay. So well, we're doing, we can ponder these things. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I'm perfectly honest with you. But I just wanted to tell you about some things that I see when I'm. Well, let me ask you this, guys: Do we leave it in one car and force people with businesses to come in here and then justify uh, why two cars isn't a big deal? That was my. That was my. I mean, that's what your point with the traditional use. That was, that was my thought. Do we yeah, keep it a little yeah. bit restricted? Well, listen, you could be a permitted use, but with just one right. car, and then, then we can see where they're parking. Right. Because you know what's going to happen? Somebody's going to come out. Oh, yeah. I have uh, enough for three cars when right. we go out there. And, and then my three kids are probably going to be third. It's not going to yeah. be what we thought. And you know what? This is, going to, this is going to kind of be, in my opinion, I think it's going to be almost a complaint-driven ordinance. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, if we, get a, if we get a complaint, I mean, you know, here's, the, here's, well, here's the idea. The idea is to have an apparatus in place that we can allow Mr. Knight to go out and enforce something. At this point in juncture, he has no apparatus in place to do anything. If someone calls him and says, Mr. Knight, uh, Joe's uh, tree trunk company is parking uh, three chippers in front of my yard, Mr. Knight has to say, that's unfortunate, and he has to say, I can't do anything about it. What we're trying to do here is put something in place that gives Mr. Knight some enforcement backing that he has a piece of paper in his hand that says, Mr. Tree Trunk Operator, uh, that's not permitted. And you sign something when you went into the clerk's office and you asked for your home business uh, license, you signed this and you said you want to be in compliance with this, sir. You are not in compliance, and therefore I'm going to cite you. Okay? And that gives Mr. Knight something to stand on. And it gives us something to stand on. And if Mr. Tree Trunk Operator has plenty of room, and he goes to sign that piece of paper and he says, well, wait a minute, that's not going to work for me, and I have plenty of space. So Mr. Tree Trump Operator going to come in front of us and prove to us that he has the means to, to house his vehicles without encroaching or infringing on any other residents. Because that's what's happening. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to control it. We're trying to make sure that the residents are taken care of and not being encroached upon by any new business. So I'm trying to point to Well, number 12 and number 6, you're right. Because uh, read, read, guys, read number 6. I'll look down on reading it again. Well, which one, Nick? Why do you want to go in? Well, 12 is run and meet, 6 is uh, Del Rand. Okay. And I think we have to think about what you're talking about is, the, you know, uh, where do employees park? You're right. We were really getting into the weeds with a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Cause, uh, but again, Nick, it's going to be, it's going to be a complaint-driven ordinance. If there's no harm, there's no foul. I don't. I don't think we're going to. This isn't going to create a monster. I really don't think it is. Okay. I think it's. Just, I think it's a small thing where we put something in place where if Mr. Mike gets a complaint, he can act upon it. And right now, he's got no legs. He's got nothing. Yeah. Okay. And also, uh, there's nothing here that says dedicated park. Right. Yeah, we're forgetting one thing too. I think most of the people that are going to have their home business and say you're, you're having two people come over, chances are that your neighbors are at work on that. Right. So they're from the 9 to 5, they're coming home at 5, these employees are gone, you're back in your driveway. No problem with that. Right. There's probably, it's never going to come to what we're making it into right, right. here. It's not, they're not going to be there at 9 at night unless they're doing taxes, whatever. But how, I mean, so who's going to be working after 5 o'clock really? At and somebody's it's house. in place, okay. we're all protected. So like Tony was saying, the three cars that he has, his son, his wife, and his, say, and he has to put them out on the street now. Kids are playing basketball. Kids aren't playing basketball until three and four in the afternoon when they're done school. So, they work. so they're probably work people are going to be gone. Or you tell them you got to wrap it up by now because I don't want my car getting hit by a basketball. Well, I think we leave it at the one. I think that's the point yeah. we're making. Right? Leave so it at the one, and your point we're getting, we're getting too much. Yeah, we're getting too much. We're just we're incorporating. What we oh, have is number right. twelve. We're going to incorporate Dow Range number six. Okay. And let, 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 that come, let that come to us. Yeah, leave it at one. If yeah. something happens, then okay. come in and I say no additional it. traffic. I mean, I think that's a big word to be used. Yeah, I would say no off-street parking should be generated in excess of one or another. Yeah. So instead of what we have on 12, go with what Del Rey has on number 6? Yeah, but take out the uh, no additional traffic there. We're just okay. going to say no off additional off-street parking. Because yeah, additional traffic will be traffic on the street. Sure. Yeah. That's a tough one, yeah. yeah that's 
So we're so going to plug num their number six and into that well check out yeah. the traffic. Correct. Right. No on street parking? No, off, no additional off street parking. Oh, okay. additional yeah. off street. Okay. And I, I just want to uh, stand corrected with the lot coverage. The definition of lot coverage is the percentage of lot area covered by the principal building and accessory buildings. So, so that doesn't, parking doesn't even count. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you look at R1 and R2 zones, there's not going to be houses with driveways. You know, five and five. You yeah. never correctly get those out areas. And we also want to plug, we're going to plug in. We're going to add the R number 17 off the bell ramp regarding yeah, the 17 waste. We'll plug in and 16 to the yeah. home occupate must be yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Park in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. How about 18? Where all the re I had printed about an application meaning to us, which, where all the requirements set forth above are met, no site plan application yeah, would be required. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right. However, uh, a uh, there will be a zoning officer has to, well, I think that's up here, the construction and our zoning officer shall inspect the premises to ensure compliance. Okay. So we're going to use, I'll incorporate 16, 17, and 18. And F is important? Is that important? Is that the state statute? Uh, I, I don't know if that statute is offhand, but I'll look it up. Well, a lot of people have a uh, take care. Yeah. Yeah. Some people do. I, I think the state, if you can your house, when is it? There's limitations by the state. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we can put that in. And I like the one, no firearms. I think that's a good one. Yeah. 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 Auto repairs, retail, so restaurants, and no so firearms. Test them out with these. <laughs> What's a number? Uh, number 13 on Del Rey. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I can't believe you have to think about that. No firearms. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, that is, that is, that is, so we're not on the gun range, is it? All right, let's ask 13. Number 13. Oh, it is federal? I think so. Is that a federal law? Well, you can't, you can't discharge a weapon in town. No, you can't. You can't shoot a bill out of town. I'm sure this came from somewhere in town with someone that yeah. yeah. decided to clean guns. What about a guy that's a collector and sells on, on outside of town? Well, this was saying that we tend to do repair. So I think you could be a collector and sell on it, but you can't be open up with that gun stuff. Are there any other occupations that you specifically Yeah, I, I thought there was a restriction already on the 
massage therapy? Because that could be, you know, uh, some towns are actually saying you can't, I know Berlin, I believe it's Berlin, we have now, that massage therapy has to be connected either with a salon yes. or a chiropractor a or a doctor. Yeah. 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 yeah, massage therapy. The enforcement aspect yeah, well, is also, I think, they, you, you don't know, have that in here enough either, is if someone's... I know people in town that are into right, you know, that right, where it's kind of like, you know, it's not like they can think of massage Kind of hands healing and new agey stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I've always found the other one. I wouldn't want to tell you about that. Are you buying on eBay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know. Is that like another entirely? Like, 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 I think it involves like uh, the people getting together as a group, and they, but I don't think it's done as a business. 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 Let me ask you guys this. There's, there's, I don't think it's not as a business. I think it's like, you know, one Just getting together. Yeah. There's no one. There's no one. Do you guys want to go home and digest? Because I only went down here like this 10 minutes ago. So what are you going to digest? This is a little bit. Like, 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 yeah, yeah, but some people don't have email. I think there's an email. I'd like, I'd like to see the members have this a couple weeks in advance of the meeting so they can digest it, mark it up, and when they come to the meeting, people will get you an email in June, and then maybe June can take you to the meeting. I'll be tired. Come to this next week. I mean, I just have to have a Yeah, I just. Enforcement is something that's an issue. How do we, what are we putting in here to enforce it? Well, the, well, I would. But, you know, the, um, I'm not saying we go out there and, and, and go out and charge in people's homes, but no. once again, once we have a problem, and get that enforcement would be just like any other enforcement. Maybe yeah. somebody is so not a lot of people go out there, yeah. and okay. also Delran has before they yeah. get there, they've got to be registered, <coughs> and the construction code official and our zoning officer of the borough shall inspect the premises as ensure compliance. Okay. We're yeah. standard, yeah. So, we're not looking to be a we're looking to put any money out of business. Yeah. We're just looking right. to protect the residents. All we're looking to do. If we have yeah. something that we can propose to council for next month, I think that'd be excellent. Yeah, we don't want any money. We're, 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 I'm going to redo another one for next, for October. Right. So then, yeah, then. That's fine. Then we're going to have to do something. They might want to rework it. Yeah, sure. Set it up. Yes, but that's what we don't want to send. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do we need any further discussion on doing business tonight? Are we okay with that? We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get back to it after Mr. Rowe and we watch it. Okay. All right, I thank you guys for your time on that. I think it was very productive. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll revisit it next month. Uh, under let's see. Let's verify agenda. Here we go. And we are going to be the permitted use. It's not going to be conditioned. Okay. Okay. Do you have any communications, June? Uh, just the one from Levy that he said that he wanted to be on this agenda. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, good and welfare at this point in time. I'd like to open up the meeting to the public. Any wishes to speak on any matter whatsoever, please come forward and state your name. So you know, no one willing, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting. Second. All right, motion to close the public portion of Mr. Dickinson. Second to our discussion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, is there any other old business? Anyone wants to discuss? Okay, with that, I will make a, uh, on, on the floor, a motion for adjournment. Motion for adjournment. Second. Mr. Offerman, discussion. All in favor? Aye. All right, thank you very much, everyone.